What's going on everyone? Juice Bags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. It is Sunday chill time and we're going to take the chill up a notch today and uh, we are going to find us a polearm for our shiny new aquarium. Now, lots of people um, love that Wave Dancer polearm. For me personally, you guys know I'm a huge fan of the Infernal Combustor. Uh, I'm going to deck out this particular Infernal Combustor, unless I find a better one, um, on my Aquarian, as I just love that polearm. However, I do realize there is a ton of people that absolutely love the Wave Dancer. Now, the Wave Dancer polearm is going to drop in the Prime 5 region. Now, it has a chance of dropping. Uh, it's not a guaranteed drop, so you're going to have to grind this one out. And Prime 5, of course, is Revenge of the Yeti, Spectral Assault, and Altar of the Athame. Now, since this is a Sunday chill day, we are going to bust our chill out, uh, and we are going to chill with the build, and we're going to chill with the enemies on the Revenge of the Yeti. Let's get it. Now, this particular map has one very important aspect to it, and that is it is just an incredibly good map for a newer player or someone who doesn't have completely decked out stuff to break in on as far as incursions go. Now, you get this preferred looking polearm, uh, the Wave Dancer, but you also don't really need to worry about making a lot of counters. And the reason is is this map was the introduction of frost enemies into the game. It was also the introduction of the Yeti mini boss. Uh, you see those little Yetis all up on the hill there. Now with that in mind, there's no chaos enemies. So if you take a look around through the lane, you got no chaos enemies anywhere on this one. And that means you don't have to worry about chaos enemy counters. Now there is still a counter you have to think about. Uh, Frost orcs, particularly, and there will be many Frost Orcs, they do have a chilling aura that will put stacks of a slow on any defenses in the area. Now, generally speaking, the natural counter to this is to overcap your defense rate. So getting as close to 100% as you can between um, your Ascension, uh, Shards, and Mods, you can overcap your rate and ignore Frost Orcs. Now, with that in mind, on this map, there's just not enough Frost Orcs to really put your defenses into a bad way. Now, it's got another real important thing, and that is fire damage. Uh, fire damage does double damage to Frost enemies, so you get yourself basically a free 100% anti-mod just by using frost, or fire against these frost orcs so incredibly powerful combo on this build or on this map now since there's no chaos enemies there's lots of frost enemies we can just stack up fire right at the spawns and burn these baddies out so with that in mind i'm going to be going with a fisher of ember mount uh, ember mount flames anti-chaos and defense rate yeah i got anti-chaos on there i'm not going to change my mod up just for this one map so that is basically a dead mod slot for this particular map uh, then I got Destruction, Mass Destruction, and Deadly Strikes. Then we're going to be throwing in some Flame Rs as well. Uh, I'm using Mass Destruction, Encroaching Flames, and Deadly Strikes. You can use Mass Destruction, Destruction, and Deadly Strikes. You can triple stack Mass Destruction, Destruction, and Encroaching Flames if you don't mind the baby-sized Rs. Uh, however, this is just what I'm going to go through. And basically, the concept is, is Ember Mount Flames, even at 1 out of 10... It's just going to put that dot on enemies, um, and it's going to tick as they go down the lanes. And with the exception of this lane, which is really short, all of the lanes are just going to get burned out by that dot. Now, oh, let's just go ahead and build it out. This one, of course, we're going to go with a spawn camp, and we're going to go with three fishers. Um, let's get down a flame aura. We'll get down a boost aura, and then we'll get down some destructive pylon and range pylon. Now, for this particular map, um, there are a few flyer lanes. The flyer lanes, I like to go a little bit heavy uh, on the flame aras, as fishers, of course, don't hit flyers, but flame aras do. Additionally, here we got a really short lane, so let's just get a little bit more damage in. Uh, since the lane is short, we'll go with two flame aras there. And then we will boost our it up, and we'll get our destructive range pylon in. 
But of course, uh, this particular lane, um, we can just go with the one flame aura setup. This one is a relatively long lane. So we're not going to have to worry too much about the enemies. Um, they're going to have that dot ticking from Ember Mount on them for about a year. Now over here, we got our first flyer lane. So this is one of the ones we want to go heavier on Auras. So we're going to do our same three fissures, but we are also going to go three Auras. And uh, those Auras are going to clip on those flying enemies as they come out. We're still going to get our boost star down. We're still going to get our destructive pylon down. And then we got yet another flyer lane up here. Uh, so we want to do the exact same thing. So uh, let's get our fissures down first. We're going to go three fissures. We are going to go three flame auras. Maybe. There we go. We're going to get our boost star in and we're going to get our destructive and range pylon down. And that leaves me exactly 50 DU. So for the extra 50, just in case any flyers do get sneaky, I'm just going to throw uh, all for one sky guard down over here. Uh, my Sky Guard's doing controller, defense range, and defense rate with destruction, all for one and deadly strikes. Um, this gets it uh, just crazy, crazy range. Uh, you know, 9,400 range. With uh, pylons, you do get to the range cap on this one. But um, yeah, 9,400 is more than enough to hit the spawn over there. Now, after that, uh, we're done with the build. We want to go to our kind of troublesome lanes, I like to call it. Uh, this one more important than anything, and then just because this lane is so short, I'm going to get at least one upgrade in over here. Now all we have to do is chill. So we can let the map run. Uh, we do want to keep an eye on the mini-map and watch for any leaks. However, remember that any enemy that does leak is going to be dotted up by that Ember Mount Flames, meaning they're very likely just to die anyway, and you're not going to have to worry about it. Now, we are going to get lots of Yeti bosses, so we are going to want to deal with those Yetis. Uh, you see the flyers, particularly in that lower lane, um, will sneak out sometimes, and that's where that Sky Guard is doing its business. But it is pretty much spawn camp and chillax it out. Now, this map also has some of the best scenery in the game. Um, incredible backdrop here. This one just looks real, real nice. And then, of course, if you get real bored, you can also do uh, some swan diving uh, to your death, of course. But uh, you do get the scenic view of the river below. But of course. So once again, we're just chillaxing it out and uh, waiting for um, the map to run through. Now, wave one, we're not really going to have any issues. As you would imagine, we're going to get um, uh, lots of value out of upgrades. Now, since we are using that Ember Mount Flames mod to dot enemies and let the dots tick, I am going to want to prioritize upgrading my fissures. Uh, if there's any lane where you're really overly concerned about the flyers, then, of course, uh, upgrade some flame ours on that lane. But we are just going to upgrade our dots, basically. So we want that damage over time ticking away, and uh, the fissures are going to provide that now. I still got lots left. We never did anything on the bottom lane here. I'm going to hit the flame ours here just because so many flyers were pushing through. Uh, we'll still hit uh, our fissures as well. Uh, and then that leaves me uh, not very much, but we got a little tickle up here. We can get a couple of fissure upgrades or just one fissure upgrade in. And then we'll just chillax it out once more. Now, you're going to get frost orcs, or pardon me, you're going to get uh, yetis like crazy. You are going to want to keep an eye out for the Yetis. Now, if the Yeti spawns on a longer lane, you're not really going to have to worry too much about the Yeti as the dot's going to take away on it. However, any Yeti that spawns out of that lane, you're going to want to intervene with. And really, probably this lane as well. Um, Yetis could potentially make it through uh, to an uncomfortable state there. Uh, of course, we got the lower lane Yeti. One of the benefits we have here is we can line of sight the Yeti shot, which he's not even going to get one off, so we are all good. Um, basically, wait for the Yeti to line up and then just step out of the way, and uh, you're not going to get frozen up. So, good stuff there. And once again, we are just waiting for the map to run. Now, hopefully we get a Wave Dancer. 
Um, I don't really... I know the Wave Dancer people love the way it looks. Like I said, for me, there's just no comparison to the Infernal Combustor. It does not match with the Aquarian theme at all, but I'm also hoping and assuming that we are going to get some sort of a um, pole arm that is like a trident when the new maps and new boss come uh, to DD2. Now, that, of course, is not yet confirmed, but, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer in my mind. How would you not add in a trident? You know, it's just got to happen. Got to happen, Chromies. Uh, let's let it fly again. Uh, from this point on, you know, obviously, depending on your uh, tier of gear, the more upgrades, the merrier. Um, even with those dead mods, with all that anti-chaos going on this one, I'm just not going to sweat uh, any more upgrades. I just want to get through the map as quick as possible. Now, this being an incursion, you're not getting a bunch of loot on this map. But this map would definitely be a really good break-in farm map for any new players uh, that are just progressing through the game. As soon as you uh, get the map unlocked, it gives you a Chaos 8 map to grind. Now, with no, with no Chaos enemies to worry about countering. Now, with that in mind, it's not super, super worth the time other than like the pole arm as there's just not a lot of loot. You know, you're not going to get uh, much of anything uh, loot, crafting materials. There's just nothing available from the map other than like that wave dancer, if that's what you're looking for. But yeah, stuff just dying. Let's see if this wither beast makes it. I don't know. He didn't make it very far at all. The, the Flames mod, the Ember Mount mod for the Fishers is just so incredibly strong. I mean, it's a crazy counter in Chaos 9. Uh, that was the meta for many, many people in Chaos 9 for a long time was just Fisher spam. And it would just burn all the enemies. It just does an amazing, amazing job. So, um... It's niche use now in the current end game. You're not going to be using your fishers very often in Chaos 10. However, this is one example where they just really, really shine because of that continued dot damage. Now, um, you know, since I'm fully decked in Chaos 10 gear, a lot of these enemies are dying off. We're not seeing that example. But anything that leaks and runs down has got a long run with a damage over time dot ticking on them the entire time. So with that in mind, yeah. All right, we better get this guy first. Now he's actually almost dead. We can see the dot ticking away on this guy. Um, You know, he's still got a long way to walk, but he's actually getting in danger zone. So I'm just going to go ahead and slap that guy as well. Uh, the Yeti's... Not so much. That's actually a pretty long lane. So I think the Yeti health is just a little too much at Chaos 10 uh, for the dot to completely kill it. Uh, maybe on that lane, it might. I'm not sure if we get Yetis out of that lane, though. I know we get them there, there, and down below. That may be the only three Yeti lanes. Uh, I'm not positive. I don't remember. It's been so long since I grinded this one out. Absolutely incredible map to do, though, with those uh, frost enemies. And no chaos enemies. So just makes for a super, super easy burn. Uh, because of the free 100% anti-mod that is fire damage uh, versus frost. All right, let's just let it fly here. The last wave. Uh, we'll get uh, multiple Yetis again, so we want to keep an eye out for them, particularly any Yetis down there. There is a Wither Beast on the run. We can't see it. Oh, it died before I could get into range to see its health bar. But, yeah, the dot uh, just destroyed that little guy. Pretty much smooth sailing all the way around. Like I said, we'll kill this one first. Since that's the shortest lane. And then we'll go over to this one. It looks like that is the only three Yeti lanes. Move out of the way of the snowball from hell. And this Yeti actually 
I guess it's just a matter of crits, too. That Yeti took a lot of damage, so this guy would have died due to the Fisher uh, mod before he made it to the core to kill it. So good stuff there. Uh, oh, we had a little Frosty sneak by. Little Frosty sneak by. Did not die. That one died, though. Actually, I think that one may have died to the pet. Little protobot going to town here. And there we go. Map done. Now, you also get the benefit of it's a spawn camp. You know. So the map does run fairly quick. It, you do have these long gaps uh, in between enemies. But overall, the map runs super fast. You see we got some frost orcs over there. And some enemies got frozen up. And then we got our one last little wither beast. You see that uh, Fisher dot ticking and doggo down, doggo down. That is for sure. So let's uh, let's see if we got our wave dancer here. Let's see, RNG, what you got for me? I got to say they are fairly rare. I think that's one of the reason people like them so much. You just don't see them a lot. Uh, no wave dancer here. Uh, you also get the rings of regen which are going to be fairly niche uses, uh, but still a very useful survivability ring uh, if you are in need of some of that. But that will do it for now. Happy Sunday, y'all, and uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you next time around. Take it easy.